There are two things that most people look for while buying a television, hardware and software of course. So in the hardware section you've got display and audio quality that most people generally look for when you're you know, at Best Buy or Walmart or whatever. And there's of course software which is lately becoming more and more important as you have to upgrade your software every now and then to keep up with most of the apps and all that jazz. So yeah, there's three major operating systems for most televisions. There's the WebOS for LG Smart TVs and the Tizen OS for Samsung Smart TVs and Android TV OS for most Android TVs out there. I mean, I know there's Fire TV OS and Roku OS for other operating systems, but that's for another day. So yeah, you're probably wondering which one's the best or if you're considering buying a new one, you wanna know about each and every OS out there. Most of the features in Smart TVs are kind of similar. So the only real difference that you actually see is in the little intricacies of the way the companies make those TVs. Let's see how you can actually differentiate one TV from another, starting with UI. In terms of interface, WebOS and Tizen OS are quite similar. It's got a menu bar that you can gesture up from the bottom of the screen, which then contains a row of content that you can scroll through and the icons are minimalistic. So even if you are watching a movie or a TV show, you can still watch the content and navigate around the menu. Android TV, on the other hand, takes the entire home screen with categories like voice command search on the top, followed by popular apps and movies, and TV shows that you're currently watching. You can't use Android TV interface while watching your shows, although on the bright side, you can set a custom launcher on your Android TV like the HAL launcher, which lets you customize each and every setting. For instance, suppose I want to launch a handheld app like SmartDNS Proxy's VPN to change my location. In the regular launcher, I have to go install the side-loaded launcher to view it. But if you replace this with HAL, you move from this clutter of Hotstar and Netflix recommendation to a minimal layout that shows you all of your installed Android TV apps as well as the handheld ones. Now, user interface is quite subjective because I might like the minimalistic Tizen OS, but you might like, say, the Android TV. But you know what's not subjective? The number of apps and ad support. So let's take a look at the number of apps available for each and every operating system. In app support, Android TV is the clear winner. You can easily install almost every application in the Play Store. And you can even sideload apps with the help of Aptoy TV. Like the other day, I wanted to read my hard disk drive, which was in XFAT format rather than FAT32, which is the one that most TVs read. So it uses the Microsoft XFAT NTFS viewer to read all the content. On the other hand, Tizen OS and WebOS have basic apps like Netflix, Prime Videos, Disney Plus, and etc. It doesn't have apps like notification mirroring or XFact view or, you know, useful stuff like that. And to make matters worse, you can't even sideload apps on Tizen or WebOS that easily. For example, if you want to use Hulu outside of the United States, by default, you can't watch it in any of your TVs. However, on your Android TV, you can simply sideload the Hulu APK from the Apple TV store and then watch it on SmartDNS Proxy's VPN. However, if the Hulu app is not available in Tizen or WebOS, there's nothing you can do about it. Another important thing to look for while you're buying a smart TV is the operating system and see how well it works compared to the other ones. Tizen OS has an interesting feature. If you've got a Samsung smart device like Note 9, you can not only control your TV with your smartphone app and type on your TV with your smartphone's keyboard, but it even lets you turn on your Samsung Smart TV with your smartphone. That's something I've never seen in any other smart TVs. One of my favorite features is private listening. Now you can listen to your television sound directly on your Samsung smartphone. Check out the full video on Samsung TV tips and tricks if you're keen on knowing how to do all that aforementioned stuff. Moving on to Android TV. Many people know about Smart Remote to control your television and it works quite good if you have a touchpad navigation controls or even Google Assistant. You can type with your voice, but only a few applications support it. But since we're talking about an ecosystem, you can control your TV with Google Home as well. You can easily connect your smartphone with the LG's WebOS. 
First of all, you need to download an app on your smartphone called LG TV Plus. When you open it, it will show your television. So choose your TV when that pops up and then create a time pin and enter that onto your phone. From my experience, this app works flawlessly. You can do everything that you do on your TV like with a mousepad navigation. But the best part though is that you can directly play your mobile content on your TV without it casting your device. Pretty much all smart TVs now come with a voice control within it, like say Google Assistant or Bixby, but how good are they actually? For example, Tizen has built-in Bixby engine that can recognize your words for changing TV settings and searching content. Tizen also supports the Google Assistant and Alexa for voice recognition, but only via external speakers. Android TV, on the other hand, lets you control your Android TV easily with Google Assistant. Most of your applications are just controlled via your voice that you can use to type with the help of Google Assistant. Trust me, it works really good and it's amazing. WebOS, it also supports Google Assistant, but you can control your TV only if you have an LG Magic remote. Another common aspect that you'd probably see in most televisions is that screen sharing. In Tizen OS, you can easily cast, you know, from your phone to your Samsung TV. And if you have a Samsung device, you can cast it with your Smart View feature, and you can even cast your content. Android TV uses the Chromecast tech to screen mirror on your Android smartphone. You can also mirror your computer by using the Chrome browser extension. Also, if you want to mirror your Mac screen, you can use third-party apps like AirScreen to cast Mac screens onto your Android TV. Works pretty well, I've tested it quite a bit. WebOS on the other hand uses the screen share, which not only casts your Android screen, but also any laptop without having to use a separate app. Alright, last but not the least, gaming. I mean, most games that are available on TVs are not exactly you know, console level games, but they're still pretty good. And some TVs come with actual games and really good ones that you can play with your Bluetooth controller. Tizen OS and WebOS both support games, but they have their own store you have limited options there but in android tv there's bundles of games available like asphalt badlands and a bunch of others that we've even made videos on also you can sideload any games like mario and play it with an emulator like retro arc we have a detailed video on that as well so click on the youtube cards to watch that you can also connect your bluetooth controller with all systems but in tizen os and web os you don't need any extra controller they only have their basic arcade games. So finally, which one's the best operating system among the smart TVs that we saw? Well, firstly, pick it based on the hardware, like display, audio system, and screen size, of course. And after that, if you are looking for a TV based on the operating system that you like, I'd say go with Android TV OS, because it gives you the most bang for your buck, like apps, you know, games, and of course, you can connect it with other IoT devices like Google Home. That being said, if you're already invested in the Samsung ecosystem, just go with the Samsung Tizen OS for the Samsung Smart TV, because it makes way more sense, as it's much more easy to control your TV from, you know, from your smartphone even, and with the Samsung Watch too, which is pretty cool. And LG Web OS, if you've got one of those already, just keep it, it's a decent one, but if you haven't, I'm not sure if it should be picking that one. You should be picking those based on the devices that you already have or just your preference. And after that, when you've finally bought the TV, check out smartdnsproxy.com if you wanna unblock geo-restricted content, like say content from other countries that you normally wouldn't get to see, where you can you know, install a VPN on your TV and watch Netflix UK, Australia, New Zealand, Netflix US, mostly, which has a ton more content for about five bucks a month, which is bugger all. And it's free for 14 days, so there's that. As always, I'm Vamsi from Smart News Proxy, and I'll see you in the next one.